In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Bravo to speed up your Power BI development. We're gonna go through how to install it and also some of its several features that I think will really help you out. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So Bravo for Power BI is an open source external tool developed by SQL BI. So if you worked or researched Power BI in the past, you must have seen some of their articles or YouTube videos because they're quite well known in the space. And I've personally used a lot of their material when I'm studying or researching some different topics, as I think they cover a lot of the more sort of deeper aspects of Power BI and DAX in general. So I really recommend if you haven't seen them to check out some of the work that they do. I'll leave a link to their YouTube channel in the description box below. So anyway, they released Bravo last year on early access or beta version, and I didn't really get the chance to cover it at the time. So now I'm using this opportunity to cover it because I've tested it out and I found a few interesting features that I really, really am impressed and probably gonna start using from now on. So let's go through the installation process. So what you'll need to do first of all is you will need to download it from their website, bravo.bi. It will take you to this page which will just give you a quick overview of some of the things that you can do with this external tool. And uh, if you wanna download it, you'll need to go to this download from GitHub link, which will take you to a GitHub page with a lot of different download versions. So for the version that I'm using at the moment is the self-contained one. So this one installs the Bravo as software in your computer or as well as an exter external. So the self-contained version here is the version that I'm using, which installs the software into your computer as well as an external tool in the Power BI desktop. So what that means is that you will need some admin rights for you to be able to download and install this into your local machine. So I have done it already, so I'm not really gonna show you, but basically you just click the, the link here. It will just ask you, it will, it will just uh, download an installer file. You just install it like you normally would any other software and you're pretty much good to go. You'll know that it's installed properly once you uh, are able to see Bravo from your list. So if I go here, for example, you will see here Bravo for Power BI. It is here but also if you go to your Power BI desktop under external tools you should have Bravo available on the external tools section of the ribbon. So as I mentioned before, when the installation is finished, you have two options to use Bravo. You can use it as a standalone software by itself. You just run it and it, it will ask you to point to a data set. But how I recommend using Bravo is directly in Power BI Desktop just because it's a lot more convenient to do so. So for this demo, I'm just gonna use a simple data set here, the one that we usually use, the Northwind data set. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore some of the different features that Bravo lets us use and just explain to you how they work and how they might be useful to you. So let's start by selecting Bravo here and let's have a look at what it gives us. So there are four different sections here on the left hand side that we will explore one by one. So let's start with the analyze model. So the analyze model basically gives you a quick analysis of your model, the model that you have in your Power BI report. So it gives you some information like the basic size of your columns, the cardinality and their weights, and it even has a tree map here on the right hand side to just give you a visual view of you know how big those columns are in context to the whole size of, of your data model. So knowing which columns or fields take up space is good for optimization purposes if you are having or experiencing some you know, slowness in your Power BI reports. It's generally good practice to find out you know, one of the causes could be that one of your columns have very high cardinality or that it has such a high size. So, so this is a good and quick way to see what those columns are. So you will see that there are uh, essentially four columns here that are highlighted in yellow. So those are basically columns that are unreferenced in the model itself. So from what I understand, unreferenced columns are generally, you know, uh, columns that are not used in sort of any calculations or relationships. So typically they would be safe 
to be removed. However, just be aware that the non-referenced basically means that it's not being used in the model, but that doesn't mean it's not being used in the report itself. So for example, here, um, it's showing that product name and category name are unreferenced. So that's why they're highlighted. However, if you look at the report here, we are actually showing and using category name, the, the column itself in the reports. So while it's unreferenced in the model itself, we are using it in the reports on the report page. So just be aware and just be absolutely sure that you are not using the these columns in your reports before you actually remove them. So let's move on to the second section of uh, Bravo, which is the format DAX. Now you must have seen this feature already because it was already on, on the web, but essentially it's a feature that lets you format DAX measures into something more readable. So adding indentation or adding line breaks to standardize how you write your measures and uh, make it readable for other developers as well. So here, for example, it's giving us a list of, you know, all the measures that we have in our model. So there's only one and it's actually, you know, it's a very simple measure, mind you. So it's highlighted here saying that it needs to be formatted. So if we select on it, it will show you what that measure is. So typically it will give you a list of all the other measures here. It shows you what the syntax is of that measure. And if you click on the formatted preview here, it will give you a preview of what the formatted version looks like. Now it's only added some spaces in between the, the open and close parentheses here, but Im if you imagine if you have longer measures, this can kind of save save your time and basically format it to a more standardized form. So, so let's say we want to use and uh, use Bravo to format this. So what we'll do is we'll simply tick the tick box here and just select format selected here at the bottom. So that will basically format our measures based on the recommendations from Bravo. Now let's move on to my most favorite feature from Bravo, which is the manage date. Now, I think this has changed the way that I approach dates or creating calendar tables from now on, because as you know, I have created a few videos showing you how to create calendar tables. And it seems that they have made all of those videos that I've created obsolete because this I've tested this and it's you know it's a more efficient and, and kind of more lean version of, of of the calendar tables without you having to do a lot of the legwork you kind of just you know pick and choose what you want to have in this calendar table so I assume you know already that you know creating your own central calendar table is sort of one of the best practices that I recommend to people when they create their you know power bi reports it just centralizes all of your time intelligence into one place now bravo basically is able to create the calendar table for you and allows you to modify a few different things in this template. So here we are on the manage dates. Um, it just gives us a model check just to see if the, the model is compatible with manage dates. And in this case, ours is. So we're going to leave it there for now. At the bottom here, it just gives us a sample data of how the calendar table will look like. You can change the some of these values here. So what kind of templates you want to use. We'll leave it to standard for now. And then you might want to change the which day is the first day of your week. So by default, it's on a Monday, but you can change it to a Sunday or any day of the week that uh, fits your, you know, what you need. And we have a few other tabs here that we can modify. So here, for example, you can set an interval for your dates. So either you can set a specific uh, date range or year range. So between X year to Y year, or you can use the automatic scan basically looks at all of the columns that you have in your model that has a date type and finds the earliest and latest dates and creates a a calendar table automatically based on that. So similar to how calendar auto would work. So either you do a full automatic scan or you, if you have a column that you want to base this scan on, you can choose a column from here as well, which is really handy if you just want to base your, your calendar range in just one column. Under the dates, I really like this one. So you have your regional format. So how your format, your dates are formatted, the dates, what, what it's called as well. So I'm gonna just call this one calendar too. 
and some data dates definitions table. So these are just sort of hidden tables that drive some of the bits that will be on your calendar table. Now I'm just renaming it to calendar two because I have created my own calendar table already and I basically don't want to overwrite that one or at least this will have an error if I had the same name. So I'm just gonna keep it to calendar two but normally for your purposes it would just be your calendar table. And then here, this is really cool actually. So here you can turn on holidays which basically basically lets you define which holidays or which days are holidays for on your calendar table. So it will add these two new columns called working working day and the holiday day for that. So it will put one if it's a working day and then nothing if it's a holiday. So this is really useful if you're doing some calculations like a network days or some just calculating the days where you only want to calculate the working days between two dates. And uh, what's really cool about this Bravo is that you can choose which holidays country you want to base it on. So mainly I work in the UK, so I would usually just choose United Kingdom here um, because that makes sense for me contextually. But uh, if you work in the US, you can set that it's already US by default. So that's pretty handy to have in your calendar table. And then lastly is the time intelligence. So this lets you create sort of the most common time intelligence DAX functions on the measures that you have in your model. So, you know, things like year on year, month or month, typically you would write these measures yourself. However, with Bravo, you can turn this on and Bravo will create those time intelligence calculations or functions for you so that you kind of just focus on visualizing those those measures in those periods. So um, you can leave it turned on or turn it off and uh, you can choose the target measures that you want to create the time intelligence functions on. So either maybe you wanna create it on all of your measures or just choose a measure. So if you just want a measure, just one measure or a few measures that you want to create the time intelligence functions on, this is a handy way to kind of just target those measures. So in our case, we only really have one measure anyway. So we're just gonna use that one. So we're gonna tick sales here and that's really it. So I think we are pretty much done with the manage dates. So we're just gonna hit uh, preview changes here here and it will basically just show us uh, what tables is going to create, what their status are and what sort of columns that they will have both hidden and the active ones. So once this is done, you just click apply changes and magically Bravo has done the legwork for you. So if you hit done, and let's close Bravo for a second here, you will see what it's done is created this calendar too and it's created all of the different columns that you can use. So this is the original one that I've created. It's a bit more rudimentary. So you have only date and month in this original calendar table. But look at the one that Bravo has created. It's, it, it has so many things that, that, that it's created for us that we can pretty much use straight away. Uh, some of the more common ones that you would think that, I mean, it's just very intuitive. So if you, uh, just to show you how it looks or um, some of the more intuitive ones. So year, month, for example, this is a very typical issue that people have when they create calendar tables is that usually this is kind of ordered alphabetically, but Bravo has basically done all of the legwork for you. So it's created a hidden column with the right sorting and it's create a sorting for us. So it's sorting automatically in the chronological order of what it should be. So that's it. I, I was really excited about that one. So I just wanted to show you the calendar managed dates feature of Bravo. So let's look at the last feature that I haven't covered yet, which is the export data. So this is for you guys who want to export your tables into Excel without having to go through it in Power BI. Well, you can do it in Power BI too, but it's, I think export data here, it's a lot more convenient because you can do them in bulk and you can also choose, you know, some export options that normally it wouldn't just be available for you in Power BI. So here, for example, we have a list of all of the tables that we have in our model. You can choose the tables that you want to export. So uh, let's just export a few things here. So let's just choose three tables. Um, you can choose how you want to export it as so either an Excel or a CSV. So we'll leave it as an Excel. And um, you can also include an export summary, which just gives you an additional sheets in the same Excel sheet, which just gives you a summary of the job and how it worked. If it has any errors or if it fails at any point, it will just give you a summary. So let's try to export this and let's see what we get. 
So now we're gonna save it in my desktop here. And here we go. So it's exported all of those tables in bulk in the same Excel file. So you don't really have to do anything else. Let's go to my desktop if I can find it. And let me just open this file for us. So here is the file itself. So as you can see, these are the three tables that we exported using Bravo. And as you can see, it's created them in the same file, but in separate sheets, which is really convenient. And it's created an export summary here, which just shows you some information like, you know, what the tables were exported, how many rows there were, and if those were completed. So all three were exported with no problems. And that pretty much covers the main tasks that you can do with Bravo for Power BI. Now let's talk about some of the considerations to bear in mind if you're using the Bravo for Power BI external tool. First of all, uh, Bravo doesn't replace the external tools that you typically use to manage your models, like the tabular editor, for example. It basically just simplifies some of the tasks that are more tedious to do when you're doing your report developments in Power BI. So I would think of it as something that works alongside your other external tools. The next thing is that Bravo, when you use it as an external tool or by itself, directly edits your models. So as you noticed when we were changing things in the UI itself, you apply changes from the Bravo UI, it will update your data model. So because it applies changes directly into your data model, it's generally good practice to back up your reports or data models before using Bravo. It's generally good practice for you to back up your data models when you're using Bravo, just in case something fails when Bravo is doing its thing, uh, you will have your data safe and secure. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to install and start using Bravo for Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.